Landmarks define places. They help people to remember that place and give reason for the importance of said place. Emsworth, Pennsylvania has landmarks. Many, in fact. I'd like to highlight four that I believe to be the most important. They may or may not actually be the most important. Nevertheless, I'd like to talk about them. These are Emsworth landmarks. Created by myself, Spencer Haver. We'll start from the river. The first landmark I'd like to talk about is the Emsworth Lock and Dam. The Emsworth Lock and Dam is just over six miles south of Pittsburgh on the Ohio River. This particular lock and dam is actually the oldest on the river. It was constructed between 1919 and 1922. The Emsworth Locks are made up of a 110 foot wide by 600 foot long main chamber and a 56 foot wide by 360 foot long auxiliary chamber. The facility replaced three older wicket-type dams which were constructed between 1877 and 1915. They were the original Lock and Dam 1 on the Ohio River at Davis Island, completed in 1855, the original Lock and Dam 1 on the Allegheny, completed in 1902, and the Lock and Dam 1 on the Monongahela River, completed in 1915. The Army Corps of Engineers rebuilt and converted the dam to a gated structure between 1935 and 1938. This action raised the pool an additional 7 feet to accommodate larger, more modern barges. The dam itself really is an impressive structure. When we look at it from the air, as you'll see in a second, it, it spans the entire river and you can honestly see both of the auxiliary and main chamber, pictured on the right of this picture. Barges fit easily between these, as you see here, although this picture is not mine. Sometimes in the winter, when ice builds up behind it, they actually have to let ice flows go between the locks. Now let's get back to some pictures that are actually mine. From 1981 to 1986, 30 million dollars was invested in a major rehabilitation of the facility. Rehabilitation included replacing of the electrical systems, operating machinery, and building and resurfacing the lock walls. Well, now you know a little bit about the Emsworth Lock and Dam. Now, we can move on to the Dixon Log House. It's actually just right across the street. As we pan back to our map, you can see that the Dixon Log House is right across from the dam. Here it is in all its glory. The Dixon Log House was built in 1797, or around that area. Actually, let's just look at the plaque. Dixon Log House, built circa 1797 by Ben Avon's first family, reconstructed in 1984 using the original logs, Ben Avon Area Historical Association. Ben Avon Area Historical Association, or Baja for short, their main office is located right across from Custards on Camp Horn Road. Baja was founded in 1984 to help preserve the Dixon Log House. Even if we look on their actual awning on the building, we can see that with their logo is a picture of the Dixon Log House. I tried to get a picture that looked like that. Here it is. Although it doesn't look exactly the same, you can see where they were coming from. However, the Log House hasn't been there since the 1790s. In fact, at one point it faced the river and was not in that exact location. The house now sits on a small corner lot on the corner of Western and Atlantic Avenues. When the house was rebuilt on that corner lot, electricity was added, as you can see from the meter, and also a large garden. The house itself is 16 by 20 feet and has three doors. There are many other great features of the Dixon Log House, such as interlocking log beams on the corners, as you can see here, and also pictured here. The foundation is set in stone, which makes this actually a house rather than a cabin, because the definition of cabin has a dirt floor, rather than having one made of wood. It also has a stone chimney that flows right into the foundation of stone. Here's one of the side doors, and here is the front door with the two windows. There's steps leading up to the front door, and window frames as well. Now that we know a little bit more about the Dixon Log House, we can move on to our next location, which happens to be the Emsworth Bridge on Center Avenue. When we zoom back in on our map, we can see it here. Although it does look squiggly and um, a bit untrustworthy there, I assure you it is a standing bridge, as you can see from this footage. 
There is a lot to be said about the Emsworth Center Avenue Bridge. We could talk about the destruction of the old bridge, the construction of the new one, the usage in everyday life, the dangers of this bridge, some of the deficiencies it currently has, or we could talk about important design aspects that truly make this bridge one of its own. All right, so this is the plaque that is on both sides of the bridge. As you can see, it reads about the, the owner of the bridge, the Port Authority of Allegheny County, and all the people that helped to fund it to put it together. It also states that it was put together in 1975, which is true. The demolition of the old bridge took place in 1973. The old bridge was a trolley bridge and was outdated. As you can see from this, the new bridge is of steel and art construction with a concrete deck. The old bridge was just trusses. It was a trolley bridge with only a weight limit of 10 tons. One of the reasons they built this new bridge is so that school buses and trucks could go across this bridge. The funny part is, being owned by the Port Authority, buses can't even use this bridge because it is structurally deficient as it stands. As you could see from the picture before and what we'll be showing in just a second, there is a roadblock on one end of the bridge. That is because it is falling down and it is not currently in a well-maintained state. And it actually has a weight limit of five tons right now, making so that what the reason that they built this bridge in the first place currently isn't functional. The deck of this bridge is about 115 feet above Camp Horn Road, which goes below. Camp Horn Road is a major artery for Interstate 79, and it's important that this bridge does not fall down blocking that road. The bridge is designed to be a one lane each way small amount of traffic bridge. As you can see, there is one lane and a single yellow line painted down the center. Not a lot of traffic goes across the bridge, but Center Avenue is one of the most busy streets in Emsworth, aside from Ohio River Boulevard. Here's another shot of where the roadblock is. No serious damage is easily visible, but there are some deficiencies beneath the deck. As you can see from this side view, the bridge is pretty tall, and it is cluttered with trees on each side. Whenever it was first built, it had a great view from either side, but the undergrowth and trees have camouflaged some of the underside. As we can see from this shot, some rust is occurring, but the bridge does still stand strong. Now we can move on to our final, but definitely not least important, Emsworth Castle landmark. The Emsworth Castle is just a home, not actually a castle, but this nickname was coined because of its impressive architecture, large property, and proud stance upon a hill. At one point, the property that went with this house was 13 acres, but as you can see from this shot, the front yard is now taken up by a self-storage place. When the house was originally being sold, not many interested buyers were showing themselves. So, what happened was that about 10 acres of the property, which used to be the front yard, was sold off to be a self-storage place, as you can see in the shot now. That left with just about three and a half acres for the house and its surrounding lot, cut down the property immensely. Now we can talk about the house itself. It is guesstimated that it was built between 1905 and 1910, but no one really knows. It does have an impressive array of features such as stained glass and also wonderful carvings within the grand staircase. These are pictures taken from an article on the Post-Gazette done by Gretchen McKay. The stone that the house was built from came from Lowry's Run, which sits less than 200 feet from the front door. The first time that the property was sold was in 1937. Since then, six families have called it their homes. This home isn't like many other homes in the Emsworth or Pittsburgh area. In fact, it's not like many other homes on Earth which is why it's wonderful to have it in the Emsworth community, and I think it's an important landmark to include in this documentary. Speaking of the documentary, it's just about over. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed a look at Emsworth's four most important landmarks. Well, at least in my opinion. Landmarks are what truly define a place and make it special, and that's why I'm glad to have so many landmarks in Emsworth.